used to think that a child's education starts when they go to primary school. But now we learn that actually when they go to primary school, they're supposed to have a foundation. We're trying to um, ultimately get children better prepared before they start primary school so that they're not set up for failure if they get to grade one and they don't have the basic kind of underlying skills that are going to allow them to start reading and writing and doing maths. So we try and work with the schools um, or the early childhood development centres. So we work with the three to five year olds. Um, and generally the, the schools that have less resources and the teachers are less experienced. Kiwa one day came to our crash and then he asked if he have got children with disabilities or children with, who are hyperactive. Then we explained everything to Bukiwa and then she said she has got a lady here in Pink House, Rosemary, who can go to our crest to help us, to those children. She started up with two children who have the problem of stiff fingers who cannot manipulate the scissors. When we were supporting sort of individual children, the teachers always said to us, that's very nice to come and support this child with cerebral palsy or whatever, but what about the other third of my class who's also struggling, who was also not going to pass at the end of the year. So yeah, we realised that um, working with individual children, we just didn't have the, the capacity to do that. So we decided we needed to try and work with the teachers and the parents who were with the kids all the time and really to, to empower them to, to help the kids at home and at school um, and that that would be far more effective than, than trying to work with the odd individual child. need to deal with the children in a dignity manner, in a respectful manner. Give them more time because they are different children and they are coming from different homes. Some of them maybe are abused, that's why they are suffering. You must look at all these angles so that you can be sure what is going on with the child. I mean, it's, it's little things, just seeing the teachers think about, oh, this child's not drawing, or this child's not writing nicely. Mm -hmm. Let me think, how are they holding their pencil? How are they sitting? Um, let's work on their shoulder stability. Let's work on the fine movement. Often teachers see it as play and don't necessarily value play. Um, so we try and highlight all the things that the child is learning through that and how that's going to translate to later their muscles being strong enough that they can actually sit still when they're at a table and expected to sit and write. Playing with a ball is developing their eye-hand coordination. That's going to help them later on to hold their pencil and to be able to look at the board and come back and look at their page. Sort of just helping them make the links between what they see as play and maybe don't value so much. Playing and outdoor play is another activity which is good for the children. There are different areas, there's sand pit, there's jungle gym, swings, uh, pin beds, whatever. The child mustn't play in, play in one place every day. They must rotate playing outside. You must be up, you must jump, so it's physical activity. So they are getting their fine motor skills stronger. Obviously we would like to, to roll it out in, in more areas, but also just to kind of give other specialists out there or other therapists the idea that if you want to help the child, rather work with the parents and the teachers and make it a long-term relationship. <laughs>